Hey, what's up guys? Tobin here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. Today I wanted to show y'all five must-have tools for doing skull mounts. This could apply if you're a seasoned person who does skulls, if you're a beginner, a hobbyist, anywhere in between. These tools, for me, are a must-have around the shop. They have, um, they're very valuable in what they, with the purpose that they serve. And just want to share them with y'all. Uh, some of y'all may already have them, some of you may not. They're all very uh, reasonably priced and they will benefit you if you buy them, I can assure you. So, but first, I want to just give y'all an update on what's going on with our skull mount business, what our shop currently looks like, and what we got going on. I almost forgot. So, if you're new to the channel, we have a, we do homesteading and we have a part-time uh, taxidermy skull mount business. So, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. This time of year, we're pretty much doing mainly skull mount related videos, a little bit around the homestead. And then into the summer, we'll get into doing more homesteading, hunting or fishing. Um, we're doing some hunting videos now, stuff like that. So we're glad you joined us. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and stick around. And uh, let's go show you what's going on. So this is the current situation in our shop these are some of these deer are for a processor that we work for some of them are ours we even got a we've got a catalina goat right here we got to do there's a deer over here that somebody tried to boil on their own and it didn't work out so they're wanting us to see if we can fix it we're going to do that most of our heads have been picked up we got a pig over here we're waiting on a plaque for uh, that horn mount is done, deer's done, but he has a he has a pig with us, waiting to finish it up before we call him. This is a good buddy of mine, that's his deer he shot up in the panhandle of Texas. And yeah, so these are waiting to be picked up. This is kind of what's going on. This freezer right here has some heads in it. Let's see a better look, there we go. Easton's deer's down in there, speaking of Easton. We gotta get that going. So, this little freezer right here is unplugged, and I think I'm gonna sell that after deer season's over, I don't need it. Let me take y'all around back and show y'all the back of the shop. All right guys, take y'all around back behind the shop here. This is our area back here. Uh, we have a pad here, and we do some power washing here, and there's a drain that runs out to the ditch, so when we have to pour buckets of water out and stuff, we pull them there. Um, we gotta pick a couple tables we normally dry skulls on back here. And then we have our little skull shed right here. This is our overflow area for uh, materials and stuff. You see our power washers in there, buckets, burners. There's a pair of waders. Uh, these heads right here, these heads right here have all been macerated and they're waiting to be degreased. We'll do that in the next day or two. We have extra freezers in here. This freezer right here, it's a little bitty one we've had forever. I think I'm gonna sell that one too. We don't ever use it. Uh, propane bottles. And this thing is just, it normally is pretty organized, but right now it's not. I need to get in here and get it in shape. So something new we've been doing here lately, um, I've, already, I've always macerated skulls, which if you don't know what that means, that means just rotting them off. You put them in a bucket of water or a tub of water and uh, and rot them off. I've always done it. I've had a freezer on the back of our property, uh, way back behind that shed back there, and put it in like a bucket. Of, I'll put a, a pig head, for example, in a bucket of water, put it inside that freezer, and just forget about it for a month or two and come back and it'll be you know pretty much cleaned up and you can degrease it and whiten it. But I've started kind of upping my game on um, how I'm doing it and I moved the freezer up here and I put a light in there um, and to accelerate the process. Uh, those ones in there took about a week and a half. And I'm gonna open this freezer now and show you, I got another round in there now. Those, these have been in there for probably three days now and they're probably gonna be done here pretty soon. Uh, I'll open this up and show you. I wish y'all could smell this because it smells ripe. Those heads are currently rotting off. I need to put a brick or something on top of that pig right there. But as you can tell, they're, they're going good. These will be done in a couple more days. So guys, that's kind of what's going on around here. Um, the maceration 
Uh, I'm going to do another video on that and get a little bit more in depth on that and how I'm doing it. Um, I, I run a skull mount taxidermy Facebook group and we have about 1500 members on there and uh, kind of, like I said, I've always done the maceration thing but just not on a bigger scale. There's some guys on that group that are doing it on a very big scale. So I'm trying to uh, just kind of experiment with how they're doing it and, and see if it works for me. Uh, all the heads that I showed you here in the floor of the shop. Those are all going to be boiled or simmered, however you want to do it. Um, and these will all be cleaned that, with that process. If you go way back on our channel, I've got some videos. I did have beetles at one time. I do not have them anymore. I do not use them. I sold all my beetle colonies. And I, um, to the people that use beetles, more power to you. But I have no intention of ever using them again. I will either macerate or uh, boil simmer. Uh, I'm thinking about making a video on the three. I've done the three, all three processes, um, and I've I've got an opinion on all of them. And I'm thinking about doing a video on that. If y'all like to see it, comment below. Uh, I may just do a, a like a pros and cons video on all the different processes to uh, clean a skull. So, but that's pretty much what's going on around here. Um, this time of year, we're, we're cranking out about 30 to 40 heads per week. And this is, like I said, uh, I don't know if I said it already, this is a week uh, before Christmas. Actually, exactly one week before Christmas. So, this is kind of at the down, I guess you'd say we're on the downhill side of the, of the season. We try to get wrapped up by, you know, end of February, maybe March the latest. We try to get everything wrapped up. And then if any skulls come in or heads come in after that, we kind of put them in the freezer and wait up, wait till we get a, enough to do a, you know, a batch. And we don't do them like individually, really. Um, but deer season ends two weeks like two weeks and two days from now the main season it'll be a late uh, doe season but uh you know it'll it'll start slowing off, uh, you know definitely slowing off by then so but i want to show you all these uh these tools that we we have in our shop i think they will benefit y'all so let me turn the camera around here and we'll go through them all right guys five tools that you should have if you're doing skull mounts whether you're doing them for as a hobby just for yourself or a little business or whatever, anything in between. These will benefit you. Number one is a Havilon handle. You can buy these handles on Havilon's website. I've got tons of them. Here's one without a blade on it. I've got, I don't know how many of them. With a, I use a 60XT blade. That's what that blade is right there. That's a brand new blade and it will cut you big time i've done it i've i stuck i stuck about that much into my palm a week or so ago i don't know if you can see right there but there's a i stuck probably that much a couple of years ago into my thumb and i've cut myself several times um i don't typically go get stitches unless i have to i have super glue so i know you can tell me about the warnings with super glue and stuff but i just pinch it closed and super glue it so that's a whole other video. Um, I order, this is a hundred count box of the blades. I order these off of Amazon for like less, about 40 bucks. I will go through two of these blades per deer when I skin a deer. Um, typically I'll remove the jaw and the, the jaw and the neck. And I'll use one blade and then I'll change it out and I'll skin the rest of the head off. And I don't remove the eyeballs um, and a lot of meat since I boil, but you know you could probably get all that done with another blade easily. I don't try to resharpen them and stuff. I mean that's that's 80 cents uh, for one deer, so it's not really eating into my profit margin as much. So that's what I do with this. This is number one. I've I've gone through I don't know three of these boxes this season already. I just order one or two at a time off of Amazon, keep them here. And we'll be out here tomorrow or later this weekend skinning. Uh, my wife will have one. My son will have one. I'll have one. And we'll be going to town just skinning heads. So, number one. All right, number two, forceps. And I, I, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're macerating, if you're boiling, even with beetles, I have little bitty forceps. Don't ask me what the brand is or any of that stuff. I have no idea. I buy them at a, no, a local hardware store. You can get them online at, you know, on Amazon. 
I, I have everything from tiny ones all the way up to these long ones like this. Um, oh. They can they have so many different uses. Uh, when you're cleaning a skull, you can reach in there, grab little chunks of meat and stuff. Um, you, this one's bent. You know, you can reach in there and grab the brain out when you're boiling. This one's suit. These are the long ones. I don't know how long they are. They got to be 14 inches, 18 inches, something like that. These, even if you're if you're like degreasing a pig or something, and you want to put it down in a pot, I'll take these and like lock it onto the pig and then drop it down in the water, or even when I'm whitening it, drop it down the peroxide, let it whiten or degrease, and then you can just pull it right back out and you don't have to you know, fish it out of there with something. Um, these right here, I've got, I mean, I got tons of them. There's, they're everywhere. There's some more hanging on the other side of the shop. Um, if you're pulling the noses out, um, you can use that as well. I know there's a lot of people that don't pull the noses out. There's all kinds of controversy on it, but we pull them out here uh, if we boil them. So I think these are like, I think I paid maybe eight bucks for the big ones, maybe six bucks for these these ones, and the small ones are even even less. So that right there is a must-have here. Number two must-have, doing skull mounts. Number three, Dremel tool. I've had this Dremel tool, this same one, for I bet you since I started doing skull mounts eight or nine years ago. The exact same one. I've used it for countless things. Um, this is a new bit that I just found out about. I don't know, it's like a 761 cutting bit or something like that. Um, one of the guys on our, our skull mount page uh, swears by them, so I ordered one. Uh, after you boil or macerate, all behind the head, where that neck meets, there's a lot of stubborn tissue back there. You turn this thing on about halfway and go back behind there, and, bzzz, and it will just it just cuts it off there like butter. So that's one thing for it. If you've ever had an issue where you get a spot on a skull that's like a little black spot from different, I mean, they can have different things. You can use this real carefully. Um, you got to be very very careful, but you can kind of shave off a little spot. Sometimes you'll get like where you have a skull that's finished and you have a fly that'll land on it and they'll put little black dots on there. If you can't get it off with a wipey or something, you can use this and just easy, just kind of just cut it off there. And then once you're done, that skull looks, you can't tell that it was done. It just kind of blends it in. So, and then there's a hundred other things I've done with it. I use it when I do, when I do skull caps or I do a horn mounts like this one back here. Um, if the if the cap's cut too big and you want it smaller, you can use this and cut it out better, and and trim it down and get it the way you want it to before you mount it on a board. Just tons of stuff. So, Dremel tool, just get you some bits, cutting bits, uh, brushes, all that kind of stuff, and and you'll 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 thank me for that. That's a good one to have. All right, number four. I, there, there's I've had on uh, so many people ask me about how to touch up horns. If you do more than a few skulls, you're going to have issues where you get horns that discolor for a number of reasons. When you're whitening them, it can happen. When you're macerating them, it can happen. When you're bowling them, it can happen. This right here is our go-to for touching up horns. I don't know if you can see it. If it'll... It's a wood finish Minwax stain marker. Provincial is the color we use. You can use, I mean, there's, I think just about any color will work. It doesn't really matter. So you just get the skull and, you know, normally it's around the base of the antlers or on the burr and you can just take this and color it in then take you a paper towel and just kind of fade it and kind of make it blend in, let it dry. And it, it, it's it's crazy how, how much it looks like a natural antler if you do it right. So stain marker. Now, if we have a bigger one that needs to be touched up a lot, we have a small bottle of this stain and we use a Q-tip and we can, we'll touch it up that way. But if you get this on the skull, it is hard to get off. So um, just keep that in mind. It'll come off, but it's hard. That Dremel tool will help you get it off, uh, stuff like that. But um, you know, make sure you're holding the skull the right way and as it's drying, turn it upside down, that kind of stuff. So number four. All right, guys, we come to the last tool of the five must-have tools when you're doing a skull mount. Number five, I have 20 or 30 or 40 of these 
and I'm always having to buy more because they bust, they break, whatever. I got to go buy some more um, this weekend. A five gallon bucket from Walmart, Home Depot, wherever you want to get it from. It doesn't matter what process you're using, these will come in handy. All of these heads you see on the floor, we're going to skin those in a few days and then we'll boil them the following day. And we're gonna put them all in buckets put water in there and let them sit when i'm doing skulls i never let them dry out until we're done with them from the time the skin comes off of them until they get whitened i want them to stay have, have moisture or have um stay hydrated um the second they start to dry out at any point it, all that meat and everything turns into concrete and it starts to harden onto that that bone and it is makes it much more difficult to get it off there so and then us soaking it before we boil them it also pulls a lot of the blood out of them so many benefits if you're macerating you can macerate right here in this with a fish tank heater um it, it, it there's just so many like when we we reuse our peroxide we put it in a bucket put a lid on the bucket and we, it stays great for months if you need it to there's so many uses for these stop if you're going to do a skull just one or, or multiple stop at your local hardware store or wherever pick you up one of these a couple of them have them on hand you'll you'll thank me later we we I, I wish i had a bucket sponsor or something we buy so many buckets we need somebody to sponsor us to get us buckets so that's number five get you a bucket guys thank y'all for watching this video i hope those five tools help you I'm sure if, you're, if you've done a few skulls, you probably have at least one or two of those already laying around, but I wanted to share mine. Uh, those are probably the top five that I use. Uh, but we have a lot of other little uh, things that we do, little tools that we have uh, that help us out. Probably make another video before too long and share some more. But if you guys like this video, please let me know. Um, please comment down below. Let me know uh, one of your tools that you use that, uh, that's I'm all, every time I talk to somebody about doing skulls, uh, everybody always has one little tool that they use that's, uh, um, you know, that I never thought of or something like that. So I'd love to hear about it. Like I said, if you like this video, please subscribe. We have a lot going on here. We're looking forward to, we've had a lot of fun this taxidermy season. Um, we have a, a guy that works for us. He's been a big help. He works for us a couple days a week. My wife's working at it full time. I have a full time job and work in the evenings. And uh, we've, we've been keeping up really good, and it hasn't been too stressful this year, which is nice. But we're looking forward to, to being through with it and moving on to the springtime and uh, doing our normal stuff that we do, fishing, uh, camping, and uh, doing stuff around the homestead. We've got a lot of plans right here for our chickens and um, we getting us another feeder pig and stuff like that. So y'all stick with us and watch all that. We appreciate all the support from everybody, and uh, we'll see y'all again.